horseshoe lunacy, plus horse race predictions. And they're off! Oh, God. This is Not My Party, brought to you by The Bulwark. All right, y'all, stick around for the Not My Party midterm predictions at the end of the episode. But we have to start with the insane assassin who bludgeoned Nancy Pelosi's husband to the brink of death while searching for the speaker in the hopes he might break her knees. Break your knees. That is an oddly specific detail. In a normal, healthy society, we might all unite together in sympathy for the Pelosi family and with a renewed effort to keep our leaders safe. But that ain't our world. We are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving it back to you, the people. The resemblance. Uncanny. The American right and Elon Musk, their new chief twit, that's a formal title, spent the week instead making crude jokes about the Pelosi's, defaming the media for how they covered it, and spreading fake news about how this might have been a gay love affair gone wrong. What? The basis of this conspiracy mongering emanated from a pretty strange fact about this case. The attacker was a Berkeley nudist who once lived in this house with a BLM sign and a rainbow American flag. That doesn't seem right. To the cons, this was proof. It was nothing more than a gay lover spat rather than a political hit. But that preys on a misunderstanding of our current politics and how radicalization works. It's called the horseshoe theory. You see, the parties do not exist on a line where the far left Berkeley nudists and the far right MAGA nationalists are on opposite ends. Instead, we have an ideological horseshoe. And inside the horseshoe, the conspiratorial extreme sides of both parties are getting closer and closer together. Yay! No, no, that's not good. As a result, it's much more common than you might expect for someone who is a far leftist to go full MAGA. I'm anti-establishment. They hated the Iraq war and supported Occupy Wall Street. Then over time, they gained such a mistrust of government and institutions that they jumped the chute and began to hate Hillary and the deep state and then went down the path to QAnon and COVID conspiracies. Stop restricting our freedoms. If you read the Pelosi attacker's blog, that was his essential trajectory with a few crazy sidebars mixed in. It's aliens, okay. man. Okay. Look around online long enough and you'll find plenty of dudes who followed this trajectory. And somehow, despite the fact that we have a deposition where the attacker explained his rationale for trying to take out Nancy, assholes on the right are using his status as a Berkeley nudist to continue to peddle the debunked gay lover theory for political ends. What? The sad reality is that kind of incessant conspiracy mongering is what fuels the radicalization of people like that attacker in the first place. Where are you, Nancy? We're looking for you. Yikes. And now we move from the horseshoe to the horse race. My midterm predictions. Yeah. The race for control of the Senate comes down to these four states. Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. I might have known. The Republicans need two of the four to take the chamber. The Dems need three of those four to maintain their majority. My prediction? Republicans actually win three of those four states to get to 52 Senate seats. And keep an eye on long shots in Colorado and New Hampshire, where Republicans might steal one to get to 53. Awesome. In the House, a red wave is coming, or a mini wave at least. I have Republicans picking up 20 seats, with surprising wins in the more conservative of areas of blue states like New Mexico and Rhode Island. Thrilling. In the governor's races, I think the Democrats do better with abortion as a key issue. I see wins for the Dems in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, while Republicans take Georgia and maybe Arizona. Though I really hope not, so tell your friends in Arizona to vote, vote, vote against the election denier. Nancy Pelosi, she's got protection when she's in D.C. Apparently her house doesn't have a lot of protection. Hilarious. We'll be back next week for a recap and analysis on what the big takeaways are from the Tuesday elections. For more weekly episodes of Not My Party, smash that subscribe button.